Hi and welcome to Transforming Graphs. Just before we start, a reminder that there is a notes jotter available for this video. Check the description below for a download link and you can work along with me as we go through the video. So, uh, what we're going to begin with is we're going to begin with a graph which is showing us x squared and we're using this in the form of the function version. Uh, basically, just uh, it is just the same as saying that y equals x squared. Um, but what we're saying is that we want to show on the graph the graph of f of x plus 1. And so if f of x is x squared, what we're looking for is the graph of x squared plus 1. Now what would happen if each time we found our x squared value, we added 1 on? Well, let's just think about a few key points on this graph. So f of x plus 1 I'm going to do in blue. And let's think about when x is 0. So if x is 0, well that is 0 squared plus 1. And therefore it would actually now be here at 1. If x was 1, well 1 squared is 1, um, and then add 1, so it would now be 2. If x was 2, well 2 squared is 4, plus 1, it's now 5. And if x was 3, 3 squared is 9, plus 1, is now 10. Well, if you have a look, this looks very much like the curve that we already have drawn. All we can say is that it's a little bit further up. Does that still happen in the negative values? Well, if x is negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1, plus 1 is 2. Negative 2 squared is 4, plus 1 is 5. And negative 3 squared is 9, plus 1 is 10. And what we can see is that it does exactly the same thing. What we can see is that all that has happened is that adding 1 at the end has actually moved that graph up. It's exactly the same graph just one space further up. So what would happen if we were looking at f of x take away 2? Let's have a look at that one in green. Well, the same thing again. Let's start with some key points. If we use x is 0, well, x is 0. This is actually saying x squared take away 2. So 0 squared is 0, take away 2. It will be negative 2. If x was 1, well, 1 squared is 1, take away 2. What is negative 1? If x is 2, 2 squared is 4, take away 2 is 2. And if x is 3, 3 squared is 9, take away 2 is 7. If we draw this curve in, we can see, again, we've got exactly the same shape, just a little bit further down. And if we do the same for the negative numbers, does it do the same? Well, negative 1 squared is 1, take away 2 is negative 1. Negative 2 squared is 4, take away 2 is 2. And negative 3 squared is 9, take away 2 is 7. And if we join this up, well, we get exactly the same curve again. And all that has happened is it's a little bit further down the graph. What about if we are thinking about f of x plus 1? So in this case, the x plus 1 is within the bracket. And so for this one, we need to think a little bit more carefully. What's actually happened here is um, where we had already used, say, x equals 0. What it means is the result of x equals 0, we now place that in here. So we actually want the, uh, the answer for x equals 1. So in this case, when x equals 0, we actually want the result for x equals 1, which was 1. When x equals 1, we now actually want the result um, from x equals 2. And so 1 would actually be 4. And when x equals 2, we actually want the result when x equals 3. And so it would be 9. And when x equals negative 1, well, because we've added 1 onto that, we actually want the result from 0. And so we would get an answer of 0. From x equals negative 2... Well, we want the answer for negative 1 instead, which is 1. And for negative 3, I'm now actually getting the answer for negative 2, which is 4. And if I draw this curve in, what we'll actually see is that, again, it is actually the same curve. All that has happened is that it has moved to the left. If I look for the f of x take away 2, well in this case, if I had the value of x equals 0, what I'm actually coming out with 
is the result for x equals negative 2 because I've taken 2 away. So at 0, what I'm actually getting is the result for negative 2, which is 4. At 1, I'm getting the result for negative 1, which is still actually the same result. For 2, I'm getting the result for 0 because I'm doing 2 take away 2. And so that would be 0. And for 3, I'm getting the result for x equals 1, which is actually here. If I look at um, negative 1 for the last one, um, if I do negative 1, I'm actually looking for the result of negative 3 because I'm taking 2 away, and that answer is 9. If I draw that graph in, what I can say is it's exactly the same graph again. All that has happened is it has shifted to the right this time. So how can we describe what has just actually happened? Well, I want to use the language of transformations. And so what has happened here, as we have moved the graph from left to right or up or down, that means it is a translation. And what we had, first of all, we had f of x plus a value. And in that case, the translation was in the y direction. And so the translation, all the graph did was it moved 0, a. So if we added on 3, it would move up. 3. If we took away 6, it would move down 6. When the, um, when the addition or subtraction was within the bracket, so it's happening to the actual letter x, then it happened in the x direction. So the translation was left and right. And it's important that actually what happens here is that if it says add a, so add 3, well, we would actually subtract. We would go to the left. If this said subtract 4, it would go to the right. It would go in the opposite direction. So next, we're going to look at the effect of negatives. Um, and so I've given you the graph of x squared plus 4x. And what we're asked to do is show the graph of negative f of x. So the negative version of this equation. So the negative version of x squared plus 4x would be negative x squared take away 4x. So again, let's just think about a few key points here. If x was 0, well, if x was 0, this would be negative 0 squared, take away 4 lots of 0. Well, that would be 0. So this point has not changed. But if it was 1, the negative version of this, this would be negative 1 squared, take away 4 lots of 1. So 1 squared is 1, but the negative version is negative 1. And then take away 4 lots of 1, so that's take away 4. I'm at negative 5. And so for 1, I would now actually be here. For 2, well, this would be negative 2 squared, take away 4 lots of 2. And so that would be um, negative 4, take away 8. So now I would be at negative 12. And if I mark that, it will be here. And if you notice, the values that we had um, on the original version, well, for 1, it was 5. For 2, it was 12. What we've actually got is the negative versions of those answers. If we tried the same for a couple of the negative values, let's see if we get the same sort of result. So if I did the negative version of negative 1 squared, take away 4 lots of negative 1. Well, negative 1 squared is 1, so that is minus 1. And then I'm taking away 4 lots of negative 1. So I'm adding 4. So that would come out with an answer of positive 3. And positive 3 is here. The value we actually had was negative 3. And so all that's actually happened is, whatever the value of f of x was, we've taken the negative version. And so for negative 2, it was negative 4 before, and so now it will be positive 4. For negative 3, it was negative 3, so it will now be positive 3. And then at, um, at negative 4, the answer was 0, so it's still going to be 0. And for negative 5, the answer was positive 5, so it's now going to become negative 5. And if I draw that curve in, How could we describe what has happened there? 
Well, this, if we think about transformations, this is quite clearly a reflection. It has reflected in the x-axis. How about if we do the graph of negative x? Now, what this means is, again, like we did before, we're going to now take the negative version of our x values and give that result. So, let's have a look. At x equals 1, what I actually want is the result from negative 1. And so from negative 1, it was 3. For positive 2, I want the result of negative 2. And therefore, that was an answer of negative 4. For positive 3, I actually want the result of negative 3, which was negative 3. For positive 4, I actually want the result of negative 4, which was 0. And for 5, I actually want the value of negative 5, which was 5. If I then go to 0, well, the negative version of 0 is 0, so it would still be there in the centre. For negative 1, I actually want the result from positive 1, which was 5. From negative 2, I want the value for positive 2, which was actually 12. And for negative 3, I want the value for positive 3. Well, it's actually a little bit off the graph. It was about there. And so if I fill this curve in, what do I see this time? Well, in comparison to the red line that we began with, this is another reflection. This time, I have reflected in the y axis. All that it's done is it has flipped the negative to the positive side. And so in a general format, what we are seeing is if we have a negative f of x, then we have a reflection in the x-axis, and that is because it is affecting all of the y-coordinates. And if we have f of negative x, it is a reflection in the y-axis because it is affecting all of the x-coordinates. And so finally, we're going to look at a graph of y equals f of x. We don't know the exact uh, the exact equation, which is linking uh, y and x, um, but we know that there is a function involved. But we do know that there are key, two key points on this graph. We have point P, which is 0, 5, and we have point Q, which is 3, 0. And all we're going to do here is we're going to try to work out um, what uh, those points would be after a transformation had occurred. So the first question is asking where would point B uh, point P B on the graph of Y equals F of X plus 3. And so the first thing here, we have to identify what this actually means. If it's F of X plus 3, well, this is a translation. And because it is after the F of X, that means it is happening in the Y direction. And it means it will go up three spaces. And so all that's going to happen is this entire graph is going to shift upwards three spaces. So P would move up three places from where it currently is. And so P would now be 0, 8. Next, where would point Q be on the graph of Y equals negative F of X? Well, this is a negative, so that is telling me it's going to be a reflection. Um, because it is on the outside of the F of X, that is a reflection in the X axis. And so if I reflect in the X axis, what would happen to this graph? Well, Q is already on the x-axis, and therefore Q would not change. It would stay in exactly the same position. It is what would be known as an invariant point that has not changed its position. Where would point P be on the graph of Y equals F of X take away 2? Now again, because this is an add or a subtract, that means it is a translation, but because it is within the uh, within the bracket, that means it is happening in the x direction. But that also means we have to do the opposite of what it says. So it says negative 2, which means it will actually go to the right two places. And so P would move two places to the right. So the x coordinate would now change to be 2, as it would be two places further along. But the y coordinate would not change. It would remain as 5. And then lastly, we're asked where would point Q be on the graph of y equals f of negative x plus 2. Now this is a combination of two transformations. 
The first element is f of negative x. That tells me that I am reflecting, and it's a reflection in the y-axis. And then it is adding 2. And so adding 2, that is after it, and therefore this is a translation in the y-direction. It's going to go up two places. And so the first thing I want to do is find out what would happen if Q had been reflected in the y-axis. Well, if Q had been reflected in the y-axis, it would now be over here. It would be the same distance away, and therefore it would be at negative 3, 0. But then the addition of the um, plus 2 means that we're also translating that point. So it's going to go up two places, and therefore Q would now be at negative 3, 2. And so we've combined two, um, two different transformations there in order to find a new point for Q. And so we end with the exam question. It came from the Edexcel paper in June 2018 and it was on higher paper 1. And we've been told that we've been given the graph of y equals sine x. And this is running from negative 180 up to positive 180. And what we've been asked to do is on the grid, sketch the graph of y equals sine x take away 2. Now you will notice a word there, sketch. Now what that is saying is this is, does not need to be perfectly accurate, but it does need to be uh, have some key features involved. And so, y equals sine x take away 2. Well, basically, sine x here is our function. That is f of x. It's the original function, and then we've taken away 2. So what does it mean if we take away 2? Well, that is a translation in the y direction, and so it's going to go down two spaces. And so, all I want to do here is plot some of the really key points. Now, the key points on a sine graph is at 180, where it's 0, at 90, where it's, uh, sorry, at negative 180, it's 0, at negative 90, it's negative 1, at 0, it's 0, at 90, it is 1, and at 180, it is 0 again. And so, if I just move all, four, uh, all five of those points down to... I will have enough information to draw myself a nice curve of um, sine x take away 2. And so at negative 180, if I take away 2, it would now be at negative 2. At ne uh, negative 90, if I took away 2, it would now be at negative 3. At 0, it would now be at negative 2. At 90, it's 1 take away 2, so it would be negative 1. And at uh, 180, 0 take away 2. Well, that would be negative 2. And so all I then need to do is join those points with a nice smooth curve. And I have created a sketch of sine x take away 2.